Hello, you're welcome to today's class. And uh, today I'm taking you on the subject, biology. And I'm gonna be taking you on the topic, classification of living things. As we all know, there are two kinds of things that exist on the planet Earth. They are living and non-living things. But we are talking about the classification of living things and we are looking at how living things are structured and how they are named. Aristotle was the first man who tried to classify living things in a definite pattern. But the work of a Swedish naturalist called Carolus Linnaeus, Carolus Linnaeus is the accepted work for, use, for naming um, living things. Taxonomy is that study is that field that has to do with the naming, the systematic naming of what organisms, whether they be plants, whether they be animals. But like we all know, the work of Carolus Linnaeus, the Swedish naturalist, has a bit of a problem. And what is the problem? He classified living things into two kingdoms, and they are the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom. So where does organisms like fungi Lichens, where would they fall into? That's why in modern system of classifications, we have the five kingdoms. And they are the kingdom Monera, kingdom Protista, kingdom Fungi, kingdom Plantae, and kingdom animalia. These five kingdoms are the kingdoms where every organism falls into. But there's still a problem. What about organisms like virus? Well, it has brought about heated debate in the field of biology. Is virus a living or a non-living thing? from the character that virus possesses. It is able to act like a non-living thing when it is not in a host, meaning it crystallizes. But in a living thing, such as a suitable host, it is able to replicate itself and it is therefore considered a living thing. But in a nutshell, as it has been defined, Virus is an interface. It's the interface between the living and non-living things. So you cannot say virus is a living or a non-living thing. It is considered a living thing when it is in a host. And when it is not in a suitable host, it crystallizes and therefore portrays the characteristics of a non-living thing. Coming back to classification of living things, living things are classified into kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. And as you go down from the kingdom, which is actually the biggest or the largest um, collection of organisms, there are about 1.8 million organisms that exist on planet Earth. And there's still more that is being discovered on a daily basis in the quest of biology. Now, the kingdom coming down to the phylum, you have the class, you have the order, you have the family, you have the genus and the species. Looking at the arrow, as you come down from the kingdom to the species, you find out that there is increase in similarity and there is decrease in, mem in numbers. What does that simply mean? It simply means that while the kingdom is the largest num contains the largest number of organisms, the species contain the least number of organisms, but they are highly similar. They are called species because they can easily and freely what, interact. They can mate, produce fertile offsprings of their own kind, and therefore what, procreate and ensure their what, longevity. Also, when you're coming up, you find out that what? There is a what, decrease in similarity. That's why in the animal kingdom, you have cats, you have 
the, the, the goats, you have so many different kinds of animals, but they all are characterized, they all are characterized as what? Animals. Now let us come back to the five kingdom classification of living things. Remember that I said that the first of them is the word kingdom monera, second, kingdom protista, third is what kingdom fungi, the fourth is kingdom plantae, and of course, the fifth is the kingdom animalia. Let us take kingdom monera. Now, the representative examples of organisms in the kingdom monera are the what? Bacteria and the blue-green algae. Bacteria is a single-celled unicellular organism that is said to be what? Prokaryotic. What do we mean when we say prokaryotic? It simply means that it does not have a definite nucleus. It simply it means that it doesn't have a what definite nucleus. And it does not have the if it does not have a definite nucleus, it means that the nucleus is not bounded by a, cell, a nuclear membrane. Every other organism that falls from the kingdom monera, um, from the kingdom protista, beg your pardon, down to kingdom animalia, are considered eukaryotes, eukaryotes or eukaryotic organisms. And from implication, eukaryotic organisms are organisms that have a definite what nucleus. Let's look at the kingdom monera again. We said that the representative examples of the um, members of the kingdom monera are your bacteria and your blue-green algae. Now, we said um, the structure of, of a bacteria. A bacteria has a definite what, um, cell wall, hence the shape. You have the flagellum, but not all bacteria possesses the flagellum. Flagellum is singular, flagella is plural. So if the flagellum is actually the organelle in a bacteria that produces a whip-like movement, hence it can what, move from one place to another. So the function of the flagellum is locomotory in nature. You have the cell wall. Remember, a bacteria has a definite cell wall. You have the plasmid, the DNA, which is not enclosed. Remember that the DNA is actually a nuclear material, but it is not enclosed in a, in a, in a, in a nuclear membrane. That is why it is called a prokaryotic organism. Don't forget that. And of course, the cytoplasm. Coming back to um, that, under, uh, still under Kingdom Monera, we are still looking at other members of that kingdom. And Nostoc, Oscillatoria, and Anabena are also members of the Kingdom Monera, but these are blue-green algae. They are blue-green algae. Now, we say blue-green algae. The green there suggests that they possess the word pigment chlorophyll. They possess the pigment chlorophyll. And what is the function of chlorophyll in any organism? Yeah, the presence of chlorophyll ensures it to be able to manufacture its own food. It can manufacture its own food, and therefore we call it a, an autotrophic organism. Autotroph, meaning self. Tro, trophic means feeding. So auto means it can self-produce its own food. That's why they are called blue-green algae. For some of the other, um, for some of the other um, organisms in the kingdom Monera, like we mentioned earlier on, bacteria, which is one of the very pronounced member in that kingdom. Ba most bacteria are saprophytic in nature. What do we mean by sa being saprophytic? They help, they, only, they feed by what? They feed on dead, decaying organic matter dead, decaying organic matter. They ensure the, the dead, decaying organic matter.
And that feeding process is called saprophytism. Saprophytism. The organisms that carries out that behaves in this manner are called saprophytes. This simply means that it is safe to conclude that bac some bacteria are saprophytes, while others are chemosynthetic, meaning that they what? They are chemosynthetic. They are chemosynthetic because they are able to utilize some elements in organisms to manufacture their own food. Chemosynthetic. So, in a nutshell, Monera comprises what? The bacteria and the blue-green algae. There are several types of bacteria, and they are different because of their shapes. Bacteria could be spherical. They are called cocos. Plural for cocos is coci. They could be rod-like, and if they are rod-like, they are called bacillus for singular and bacilli for plural. When they exist, in chains. They are called streptococci. Remember, it takes more than a single bacteria, more than a single bacterium to form a chain of bacteria. So they are called streptococcus. If they exist in clusters, they are called staphylococcus. And of course, some are comma shapes. We call them vibrio and, of course, the spirilla. We also have the spirochetes. Spirochetes. Now, the vibrio bacteria has what? A what? Flagellum protruding from the end of it, of the bacterium. And what is the flagellum's purpose? It is for it to be able to what? Carry out the process of what? Locomotion or movement. Coming back to the kingdom classification, let's talk about kingdom protista. Now, kingdom protista is made up of two phyla. Phylum for singular, phyla for plural. You have the, the protophyta, that's phylum protophyta. I have the phylum protozoa. Now, the phylum protophyta are organisms in the phylum in the kingdom protista that have plant like features. They have plant like what? Features. Something. Is very basic when you want to characterize an organism as a plant, and that is the possession of chlorophyll. Possession of what? Chlorophyll. Now, phylum protozoa and phylum protozoa are they possess animal-like features. Animal-like features. With this, some of the examples of um, phylum protozoa, phylum protophyta, rather, is are uh, your chlamydomonas, your euglena, which possess chloroplast, your euglena, which possesses chloroplast. Remember that this chloroplast is actually the membrane that's what houses the what green pigment, which is called chlorophyll. 
Never forget that. The chloroplast is the membrane which houses the green pigment, green pigment called chlorophyll. That is why we say they are what? Prokaryotic and um, eukaryotic organisms. Eukaryotic organisms because they are able to, they have membranes that bound their, their, their organelles, especially the chloroplast and the nuclear membrane. Now, for phylum protozoa, you have what? The amoeba and paramecium. With what we have said about Kingdom Protista, saying they have two phylas, phylum protophyta and phylum protozoa. The phylum protophyta are the, uh, are the organisms under the phylum protista and the kingdom protista that have plant-like features. And what are the plant-like features? Possession of what? Chloroplasts. If they possess chloroplasts, it simply suggests that they are able to what? Manufacture their own food. Hence, they are autotrophic. If they have animal-like features, examples such as the amoeba and the paramecium, they are holozoic in nature. They do not manufacture their own food. They would rather ingest their own food. That's why we say they are holozoic in nature. Holozoic. 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 Coming back to Kingdom Protista, we have concluded and said that Protista has two phylas, phylum protophyta, phylum protozoa. Phylum protophyta behaves like, uh, have organisms that behave like plants, and phylum protozoa have organisms that behave like animals. We can now talk about kingdom fungi. Fungi is plural for fungus. Kingdom fungi has members such as the bread molds, the yeast, the slime molds, toadstools, and of course, the mushroom. Bread mold, yeast, slime molds, toadstools, mushroom. Most organisms under the kingdom fungi are non-motile. They are non-motile, except for the slime molds. And that is why in some other form of classification of organisms, the kingdom fungi is further subdivided into other phylas. And where you have the slime molds into the phyla for the ones that behave like animals. Now let us talk about the bread mold under kingdom fungi. A representative example of that is the sporangium or rhizopus nigricans from the image we are looking at grows on a substratum it grows on a substratum and what could be the substratum a decaying food now the rhizopus which is the bread mode are extracellular are multicellular. Now this multicellular hyphase, this multicellular hyphae, hyphae for plural, hyphae for plural, or hypha, hypha rather, then hyphae for singular.
they have false roots called rhizoids or rhizoids. They have false roots called rhizoids. And it's stolen with a sporangiosphore, which is acting like the stem. Now, the sporangium, the sporangium is the ball housing the spores. It is actually that membrane that houses the spores that is sitting on the columella. Now, when the sporangium ruptures, it releases spores. Now, these spores move around until they find another substratum or a suitable substratum for them to what? Germinate and grow into this. That is for the kingdom fungi. We just talked about the bread molds. 